If you want to buy your own ozone setup for personal treatments at home, then you need to know what exactly it is that you need to buy, what those things are called and what they do so that you know why you need them in the first place. So in this video I'll explain all of this. I will explain what an oxygen concentrator is and the difference to an ozone generator and what, an, what a regulator is. So this video is for complete newbies, for complete beginners. So if you just started looking into ozone equipment for home use, then, then this is the right video for you. If you already know all this stuff, then you can stop watching. So, so the reason why I'm explaining this because I see uh, people often, they switch up the terminology. So they say something like uh, ozone concentrator and oxygen generator um, and, uh, and they don't really know the difference between the valve, of an uh, the, the valve of an oxygen tank and the regulator that's attached to the valve. So I'm gonna go through all of this one by one. So when you're thinking about buying your own ozone equipment, first of all you need to figure out where you're gonna get the oxygen because there is no ozone without oxygen. So you need to figure out whether you're going to get an oxygen concentrator or an oxygen tank, because those are the, the two possibilities that you have. And they both, both have pros and cons, and th this, is, this may be another video. But uh, basically, you absolutely need an oxygen source. So, so one solution is an oxygen concentrator, like this one. So this is a Philips Respironics Everflow and this is one of the best oxygen concentrators um, on the market in my opinion and I've had them all. I've had Invacare, Aircep, Devilbiz, I still have a Kruva, but I, and I had two of those and I, I really think this is the best concentrator. So why is an oxygen concentrator called an oxygen concentrator? That's because that's exactly what it does it increases the concentration of oxygen. So the air that we breathe is made out of, out of around 80% nitrogen and 20% oxygen. So this is what goes into the machine. It sucks in the air, it sucks in those 20% of oxygen and what comes out is 90 to 95% pure oxygen. And that oxygen you can then feed into an ozone generator and the generator then makes ozone out of a small part of that oxygen that went into the generator. So, so, this, is, so this is why you need an oxygen source and this is what an oxygen concentrator does. It concentrates the oxygen content of the air. Okay, so this is one possibility how to get oxygen. Another is by getting an oxygen tank. And there are different possibilities. So this is, this is a CGA 870 medical uh, oxygen tank and this is a CGA 540 industrial tank. So tanks do not concentrate anything. They get refilled. So what you can do, you can either buy a tank separately and then go with a tank to a welding shop, for example, with this industrial with an industrial tank, you can, you can go to a welding shop and you say, please get me a refill and they will fill it up for you and it's pretty cheap, it's like 10 or 20 bucks. So this is uh, what you can do for this. In order to refill a medical tank, you will need a prescription from your doctor. But uh, so tanks are refilled, so they're filled with oxygen and they can r run out of the oxygen, all right? A concentrator will never run out of uh, oxygen because as long as you have power, as long as you can plug it into the power supply, then the concentrator will get you 90 to 95% pure oxygen or maybe higher even. And tanks, they will get empty and so you need to refill them regularly. Now, okay, so whether, whether oxygen concentrator or oxygen tank, what you need is a regulator. So with an oxygen concentrator, you have already a built-in regulator. Okay, like this one, for example, it has a built-in regulator. And so what is a regulator? What does it do? It 
basically regulates the flow of the gas and how fast the gas is coming out of the machine. And this is given in liters per minute, LPM, liters per minute. And this built-in regulator here, it regulates the flow between 0 and 5 liters per minute. Now this is way too high, right? I cannot feed this much into the ozone generator. Well, I will, but it will generate very, very low ozone concentration that won't really help me at all. So what I need to feed into the ozone generator are very low flows of like a half, a quarter, one eighth, one sixteenth, or even one thirty second of a liter per minute. And so how do I achieve this? Well, there are several ways. There's, you know, there in rare occasions, rarely you can find um, a um, Everflow with already a low flow built in. So uh, a low flow regulator built in. So a, a regulator that goes from zero to one liter per minute. But it's very rare. In most cases, they come with this regulator that I have here that is from zero to five liters per minute. So, but this is not a problem because what you do is you just buy an external low flow regulator like this one. And this regulator, it decreases the flow that goes from this machine and it decreases it to flows like a quarter, one eighth of a, or one sixteenth of a liter per minute. So you essentially attach the, the tubing uh, of the oxygen concentrator, con concentrator, this tubing here is attached to the to the output port of the machine, and so this is where the oxygen comes out of. And so you just attach it to the regulator, and then you take another piece of tubing and you connect the this regulator with the ozone generator, and then here on this thing you can then regulate the flow. So you basically will be working with two different regulators. One is the built-in regulator on the oxygen concentrator and the other one is this external thing. So this is the solution to create low flows of oxygen when you're working with an oxygen concentrator. When you have an oxygen tank, you also need a regulator. Because Why? Because if you didn't have it, so this tank here, it's, it's empty right now, but if it was full and if I opened the valve, okay, this thing, this is the valve, this is, this is, this is the valve of the oxygen tank. So if the tank was full and I opened the valve, the tank will empty within seconds or maybe a minute or two. So the oxygen would come out of it very, very, very quickly. But this is not what you want. What you want is low, steady, controlled, regulated flows. And this is what a regulator does. Okay, so in this case, since this is an industrial tank, I need an industrial pediatric low flow regulator. So why are those low flow regulators called pediatric? Because pediatric it comes from the word of pediatrics, so this is the area of medicine that, uh, that deals with children. And now children, babies, when they are given um, oxygen, or, yeah, oxygen or air to breathe, they have to have very low flows because the lungs of babies is much smaller and has a much smaller capacity than the lungs of uh, adults. So consequently, the flow, the amount of oxygen that babies are given has to come at a much, much lower velocity than what, uh, at a much, much lower rate than what adults uh, would get. So this is why those low flow regulators are called, are also called pediatric regulators. And this is also the reason why if you decide to buy an oxygen tank from your welding uh, shop, you should never ask for a pediatric low flow regulator because pediatric, the word pediatric is a medical term. So when you go and buy stuff at your welding shop, you don't want to trigger some weird reactions. You don't want to, you don't want them to, to become suspicious that you're going to uh, do something with the oxygen tank that you're not supposed to do. 
um, or something that's you know their insurance would not cover if something went wrong. So you don't want to buy pediatric regulators at a welding shop. You don't want to ask about this. They won't have them. They won't have any pediatric regulators to begin with. So so this is this is something that you need to be informed about and something the regulator is something that you need to buy separately from the oxygen tank if you decide to buy the oxygen tank from your welding shop. So so yeah, so pediatric regulator have very low flows of like half, quarter, one eighth, one sixteenth a liter per minute. And this is this regulator will do exactly the same thing that this thing does to the concentrator. It will lower the flow, it will lower the speed with which the gas comes out of the bottle. Okay? So this would be an industrial tank with an industrial regulator. And here I'm gonna show um, again a um, this is a medical tank with a medical regulator, you see, and it looks different. Those regulators look different because, because the valves, so this part here, this, this is the valve of the, of the oxygen tank, because the valves look different. Right, so here, this thing, it is like those pins, and they go in here. So, yeah, so what all those things do, all of those regulators, this thing, this thing, this thing, is they lower the flow, they lower the speed with which the oxygen comes out of uh, either the concentrator or the tanks and uh, goes into the ozone generator. And this is and this is the last step. So basically, so if I have here my external uh, low flow regulator, I can attach this now to the oxygen concentrator, and now I will attach it to the here to the um, oxygen in on the ozone generator. So I could, if I turn this on, this is not, not plugged in, if I turn this on, <clears throat> I would now be feeding oxygen at a low flow into the ozone generator. And the ozone generator does exactly what it says. It does, it generates ozone from the oxygen that you feed into the machine. But now it doesn't turn all the oxygen into ozone, but just a tiny, tiny fraction. So at the maximum ozone concentration that is used in ozone therapy, which is like around 80, 70 to 80 micrograms per milliliter, the amount of oxygen that is turned into ozone is only 5%. So what is coming out at a maximum ozone concentration that is permissible in ozone therapy is still 95% oxygen and only 5% ozone. So so, okay, so how does it do this? How does an ozone generator generate uh, ozone? The way it does it is by exposing the oxygen molecules. So oxygen that comes out of this thing is O2. So it's two oxygen molecules bound together. And when they go into this machine, they're exposed to electricity. And the electricity does... Uh, what electricity does, it splits some of those O2 molecules so that they rearrange temporarily into O3. And this is how you get ozone, O3. Now this O3 molecule is very unstable and will break up by itself within minutes. So this is also why uh, you have to, when you do ozone treatments, you have to generate the ozone continuously. You cannot just buy ozone in a bottle and, and take it home. Uh, it needs to be produced continuously. So, so I hope this has clarified things, you know, uh, so because last night, for example, somebody commented on my website and uh, this person asked me, okay, what do I set the uh, oxygen generator at? So, and, and sometimes people use things like ozone concentrator and just mix those things up. So, so you need to know <clears throat> what they are, and I hope I clarified this. Uh, you know, there's an oxygen concentrator and an ozone generator and a regulator. And so when you're buying your own machine, it's good to know those things because, uh, because I, you can't be fooled, you know, exactly what you need and um, yeah, what you need, what it is for, and so you, you, you're preventing people from trying to sell you something that you may not need at all, 
right? Or if you want to, or if you know exactly what you what it is that you want to do, for example, rectal insufflations, or vaginal insufflations, then you can also then you're able to set to tell, okay, this is exactly what I need, and you I I need this part, this this and this, bam bam bam, put it in a shopping cart, check out, and you're good to go. <clears throat> so when you're buying stuff, inform yourself. And so I hope that I have um, informed you with this video a little bit more. Um, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.